Liz Truss became Britain's new Prime Minister this week, with the victory over rival Rishi Sunak greeted by a crashing pound and surging bond yields, it is clear that financial markets are not too impressed. Investors are skeptical about her, the longest serving minister in the Boris Johnson government that was plagued by scandals and policy paralysis. More importantly, they're concerned that with the Tories lurching to the right, her policies could be even more extreme than those of Johnson on many important issues. Are these concerns justified? What does the new British Prime Minister mean for Brexit, for Britain, and for the world? What does it mean for your money? Hi, I'm David Wu, a former Wall Street strategist with a 20-year track record of making actionable predictions about major global change. Welcome to The Money Game, where I take on groupthink, propaganda, and conspiracy theories in my critical analysis of markets, economics, and politics. Before we begin, please hit subscribe and the bell button so that you'll be notified when a new video comes out. You don't have to like the British to think that few people in the world are as talented and as accomplished as they are. William Shakespeare, Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin, Alan Turing, John Locke, Adam Smith, Alexander Graham Bell, I can go on. British scientists, thinkers and writers not only fundamentally shaped the world as we know it, but they profoundly influenced the way we see ourselves. The modern world is specially indebted to Britain that discovered the DNA, invented the World Wide Web, and gave us Charlie Chaplin, Alfred Hitchcock, and the Beatles. The British people are inquisitive, independent-minded, and pragmatic. This is why I was a supporter of Brexit in 2016. I thought globalization had gone too far, and that Britain was going to show us the way out. I thought if anybody could do it, it would be the British. I thought Britain was going to show the world that nationalism and globalism do not have to be at each other's throat. As time wears on, I have to admit that I'm becoming less optimistic. UK voted to exit the European Union in June 2016. It formally left the EU on January 31st, 2020. It will be soon three years since it departed the EU. Even though the world economy, including the British economy, was in and out of lockdowns during much of this period, enough time has passed for us to form at least a first assessment of whether Britain made the right decision to leave the Euro European Union. Since the decision to leave the EU has a lot to do with how Britain engages in trade with the rest of the world, how have its trade performance changed over the past two years? Using the direction of trade data from the International Monetary Fund, we can reach two conclusions. One, while there are signs that the EU is weaning itself off British imports, the same cannot be said about British demand for goods and services produced in the EU. So far in 2022, UK imports from the EU are growing much faster than EU imports from the UK. As a result, UK's trade deficit with the EU is currently running at an all-time high at about £13 billion a month. This is despite the fact that the British pound is trading not far from its weakest level against the euro in 20 years. It is too early to reach a final verdict, but so far it would seem that Brexiteers were wrong to think that the EU needs the UK more than the UK needs the EU. Second, the UK seems to be doing even worse with its non-EU trading partners. Indeed, UK exports to non-EU countries are growing even more slowly than its exports to the EU. One reason is the UK's decision to stop exporting to Russia, a major non-EU destination of its export before the sanctions. UK exports to Russia are down 90% so far this year. China once called the UK its best friend in the West. But the relationship between the two countries has soured over Hong Kong. Not surprisingly, UK's exports to China, its second largest non-EU trading partner, are down 40% in May. But even British exports to friendly countries are not doing too well. British exports to the U.S., its trading, largest trading partner outside the EU, was down 4% in May versus a growth of 52% of British imports from the U.S. No wonder the U.S. is not in a hurry to sign a free trade agreement with the U.K. Some would argue that this state of affairs will soon improve. Citing the free trade agreements that the U.K. recently signed with Australia and New Zealand and a digital trade agreement is signed with Singapore. But these are relatively small economies that cannot replace the EU that accounts for nearly half of Britain's foreign trade. 
Others might point out that the UK has open trade negotiations with Canada, Mexico, and even Israel. But these are intended to just replicate the trade agreements that these countries have with the EU. In other words, in the best case scenario for the UK, it would just get back the same trading terms with these countries that it enjoyed when it was still in the EU. What about the US? Brexiteers like Boris Johnson once regarded a bilateral free trade agreement with the US, the largest economy in the world, as a key Brexit win. While Donald Trump considered a US-UK deal as a priority, under Joe Biden, the negotiations have lost momentum. This has a lot to do with the fact that the Biden administration has decided to involve itself in a dispute between Britain and the EU over the Northern Ireland Protocol. Without going into too much detail, the UK wants to renegotiate the protocol to remove many of the checks on goods moving from Great Britain to Northern Ireland that are intended to remain in Northern Ireland. The EU is against changing the protocol, and the Biden administration is siding with the EU. Indeed, in the first phone call between Biden and Liz Truss as the British Prime Minister, Biden warned Truss not to make any unilateral change to the protocol. In case you don't know, it so happens that Truss is the architect of the legislation at present passing through British Parliament that would exactly rewrite the protocol. It is reasonable to assume that even if this issue does not sour the transatlantic relationship, it is likely to hold up the US-UK free trade agreement further. This is bad news for anyone who voted for Brexit to bring more economic prosperity to Britain. Britain, America's closest ally, has been the strongest supporter to Biden's total war against Russia. While this does not seem to be helping Britain coax a free trade agreement out of Washington, it has certainly significantly raised the cost of Brexit. The sanctions against Russia have sent the cost of energy in Britain skyrocketing. The UK has one of the most deregulated energy markets that is designed to keep prices low and competitive. What this means is that unlike other countries like France, where electricity is highly subsidized, much of the higher energy costs are passed on to British businesses and households right away. Average UK households will pay £3,549 for gas and electricity this year, £1,578, an increase of 80%. This is prompting the new trust government to consider sending billions of pounds to British households to help people weather the energy price shock. However, regardless of who is footing the bill, the UK, along with Europe, will be paying more for energy than the rest of the world, potentially for a very long time. Higher energy price is a serious hit to the competitive position of the British economy that is so crucial for Brexit to be a success. Liz Truss does not have an easy job. She's taking over a country in a serious crisis. Inflation is running at double digits. Consumer confidence is at an all-time low. Public finances are on an unsustainable path, and a recession is just around the corner. The erosion of household purchasing power has already resulted in spreading industrial actions. With 13% of the private sector workers and 50% of public sector workers belonging to unions, and union membership rising steadily since the Brexit vote, we're very likely to see a return of the stagflation that crippled the British economy in the 1970s. You don't have to be an economist to know that Liz Truss' promise of big stimulus and tax cuts will only make things worse. In my humble opinion, the greatest threat to the world right now is the resurgence of political ideologies that are dividing nations and setting them on a collision course. The British have always prided themselves as pragmatic, sensible, and moderate. These qualities made Britain a magnet for people from all over the world in the past 20 years. London attracted Americans and Europeans as much as it did Chinese, Russians, and the Saudis. People flocked to London because they felt safe from judgment whether it's their religion or the policies of their countries. Moderate pragmatism should be an asset in the post-Brexit Britain. Britain should be the voice of reason, the moderating influence that makes the world a less belligerent place that in the process improved a lot of its own people. It is too early to pass judgment on this trust, but at first glance, she will be taking Britain in the opposite direction. As I said, she's the architect of the bill to unilaterally change the Northern Ireland Protocol that will seriously set back UK's relationship with the EU. Under Prime Minister David Cameron, Britain and China forged what Cameron called the golden era of relations. Boris Johnson called himself fervently cynophile. In contrast, Truss vows to take tough measures against China and promised before the election that she would, in fact, 
designate China as an official threat to British national security. Regarding British response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Truss has been even more hawkish than Boris Johnson. She has vowed to push Russia out of the whole of Ukraine. Early in the year, the Guardian newspaper attacked her for recklessly inflaming Ukraine's war to serve her own ambition. I hope Truss will prove the market skeptics wrong. But if she turns out to be everything she says she stands for, I think Britain is headed for hard times. What I'm even more worried about is the possibility that where Britain goes, the rest of the world follows. Let me end on an exchange from Odd Men Out, a British film from 1947 by Carol Reid. I understand what I see in him. What is it? It's the truth about us all. Is that all? He's due. So are we all. If you got something out of this program, please hit like and subscribe to my free YouTube channel if you want to learn more about my investment strategy. Come and check us out at davidwuunbound.com. Thank you for listening.